In this interview question, we are given a small design and are asked to calculate the maximum frequency at which this design can operate. Now, we know that the frequency is 1 upon time period. So, let's go from there. We know that in this circuit, there are three timing paths. One from FF1 to FF2, one from FF2 to FF3, and one from FF3 to FF1. We know that for each timing path, within one clock period, we must fit the clock to Q delay, the combinational delay which consists of cell delay and wire delay, as well as the setup time of the receiving flop. So if we write the equation for all three flops, for FF1 to FF2 path, we have the clock to Q delay of 50 plus the combinational delay of 430 and the setup time of 20, which is 500. So 500 is the minimum clock period which is required for this timing path to work correctly. Otherwise, there will be setup timing violations. Similarly, for FF2 to FF3, we have 50 plus 330 plus 20, which is 400. And for FF3 to FF1 timing path, we will have 50 plus 230 plus 20 equal to 300. So for all three timing paths, we know the minimum clock period which is required for those timing paths to work properly. If the clock period is any less than these numbers, there will be a setup timing violation on those paths. So based on these three paths, we know that the slowest path is the FF1 to FF2 path. So to calculate the maximum frequency at which this design can operate, all we need to do is one divided by the clock period required for the slowest timing path, which is 500. And we get our maximum frequency, which is two gigahertz. So if we apply a frequency of more than 2 gigahertz then the first path which starts to fail is the ff1 to ff2 path and we will see setup timing violations on this path so 2 gigahertz is the maximum frequency at which this design can function reliably